Let's go. <sighs> okay. Where were we? Mm. <laughs> so you're not successful in the spice school tickets. Don't um, let's not talk about it. Well, I mean it's not you haven't bought them, so I'm wondering. Do you know my heart is like it's this is how I feel every time I buy Coachella tickets. Why is this so important to you? I grew up on the spice schools. This is like the one you know everyone travels to see Beyonce and yeah. I would never. Well, I went to Coachella. She did. But yeah, mm. but I would never go out to on the run. The Spice Girls is like something from my childhood that I've that I've I never saw seen. Something on your snaps, actually. Yeah. Like you were, you, which which character did you play? Posh, posh. You're very disrespectful. Can I just say that? Like, <laughs> please. Like, I don't know. We all know you lip synced anyway. So just <laughs> wow. get on that stage. I'm sure people are rolling their eyes saying, "Ah, let's." Yeah, they'll be conversation. like, "What is this conversation <laughs> about?" So I, I really, really, I'm very obsessed about. A sustainable business, um, business that isn't just here for two, three years, because that's really the trend. Yeah, you know, you're you're hot and you do stuff for three years, but really, as Jay Z says, excellence is over a period of time. Ten years is is quite a big thing, you know. It is a big thing. It's a bit of a shock because it's like, when did that happen? You yeah. know, like when did that happen? But also, what we've done is we you try also speak to people who have done the same thing. I think. You know, that's why we're having these conversations, right? Because yeah. it's a learning curve. So we've sat down with Angus from Balm. We sat down with Harriet at Quizzical because mm. we're like, well, what are the things that you guys did that you wouldn't do again so we can learn from it? And it's crazy to hear the stories that they've, like, went through exactly the same things. Like, exact. you're like, you're almost like, but I don't want to do that. Like, you know, you want to. So, and, and it's great that they're that open to be able to, you know, have sit down and have conversations about that is great. What, what I get from you is that, there, there's no sense of entitlement. Like a lot of uh, practitioners, producers, writers feel like the industry owes them something. And so that's why you get a lot of angry artists, angry producers, angry companies saying that, well, we're not given a chance. Yeah. What I've experienced in, in my journey is this assault on you know, independent producers or company to company. Have you guys gone through that where another company sort of tries to take you out or assault or accuse you of anything? Um, not that nothing comes to mind right now. We just sort of stay in our lane. There's always dramas and things happening, but yeah. you know, just keep your head down and focus on your own journey. Because it really is, I know it's cliche, your own race, your own pace. Yeah. It literally is that. We, is, is it really? Let, 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 no, I, I literally, like I can say, oh, Legend is getting all these TV shows. Yeah. Is he being favorite, you know, is he a favorite to channel? Yeah. Maybe you are, but mm. that's not what, so what? I'm gonna say it and then? Yeah, got you. <laughs> How's it gonna get me a show? Okay, yeah. cool, you're the favorite, fine, that's great. What am I doing to get is, more business? Is, would you say, seriously speaking, would you say um, there are favorites? Or yeah, I think so. I think, okay. uh, but I think that happens in every industry. You know, like you have, if you're an actor and you have an agent, you'll find that certain people go to auditions more than you, even though you're yeah. also on their okay. books. Gotcha. So I think if you're not top of mind, you're not top of mind. Okay. And a lot of the shows that we have landed, people are always like, oh, like, yeah, who are you guys? You know what I mean? Because you're not always top of mind which is then your job to become top of mind. Because me complaining that I'm not getting work, that means I just have to find another way, right? Because sure. we it's a small pond in South Africa. There's only so many broadcasters. So about four, five. Really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. So the point is, it's not going to be sustainable if you only do that. Mm. So you have to find other models to sort of bring in things. There's always going to be someone who's getting more shows than you. There's always going to be, like, to, we're probably <clears throat> that to someone else. Yeah. The, uh, 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 talking about, you know, uh, staying top of mind, um, when I knew you guys, like the show you speak of, uh, My Perfect Family, um, you know, it's very... It's still very much apparent that you guys are very good at that type of um, Well, show. we got boxed into that. I guess. Yes. So would, would that then be a strategy uh, of some sort to stay top of mind because of this particular genre? Because uh, I'll take you to 
is it Chekhov's? Chekhov's. And... Favorite show, really. Yeah. I've always told you that. That was like really amazing. I don't, I don't know why you never got a season two, three, four, five. Because we were risque, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was something else as well. Um... Well, there's been a few sitcoms. So yeah. what happens is we made the first one, My Perfect Family, yeah. and that did really well um, for a black young company to come out the gate with a successful sitcom watched by an average of like 3.5 million people. Crazy. It's like, you know, it's like, wow. So then it became, so then we were like, oh, we can pitch anywhere. But people are like, no, you guys do sitcoms though. <laughs> and then we made Got the Life Crisis. We made we made My Perfect Family up to season four. We've done Tulino Tulani. So we got boxing. You guys do sitcoms. Yeah. And it's that's not necessarily the case. So it's, it's like a great thing. And it's also a downfall yeah. because it's like when we want to pitch a drama, they're like, can we take you seriously? Yeah, I was yeah. like, guys, but you guys do sitcom. Like, this is your why, thing. Why does that happen? Because it happens with me with reality shows. Yeah, it's like, like, Legend, you want to pitch a drama now. You do like, reality. I, of course I've got a drama <laughs> thing in me, you know? But it's. I think you just get boxed in that one thing. If you do something really well, you get like, okay, this is what they do. This yeah. is what. It, I mean, when we did um, Ultimate House Party, the guys who know us do narrative, they're like, how did you guys yeah. end up doing that? And I'm like, yeah. guys, we're in the business of making TV but, and but, telling but, but stories. But look at, it, look, look at it now, I would then say there is no way what people would box you now 10 years later because you've got all that BS, you've got some MTV stuff that you do. In fact, you guys work across the board. Yeah, we do, yeah. Like, that's, that's, very very, that's actually very rare, like that, that you guys can work on SABC stuff, Mnet stuff, MTV stuff. Where I've always felt like, uh, why? Sure. <laughs> What's they, what are they gonna say? And and when I have gone that way, you know, there's been a bit of a. Really? That's yeah, really strange. Like, like the first time I went into SABC, it was like, but you're the Vuzu guy. Like, oh. see, you, you got boxed. Yeah, it was you got terrible. boxed, which is what happens. But we've always been. We gonna make, we're gonna pitch to everybody. Like this is our strat, and this is how we go forward. There yeah. definitely should be no reason why anyone would box you now with such a catalogue Yes, work. yeah. So especially we did Bedford Wives last year, which uh, comedy drama, so we on location. Finally, we got to show that we can, you know, we can, uh, yes, it's still played in the realm of comedy. I'm not going to lie and say we're very funny people. Yeah. I mean, you're a very funny person as well. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> you should do a dum 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 in there. Um, but we... Love comedy, but we also have dramatic stories. So we still haven't told our full-on drama. We actually had a drama. We have a fully developed drama that hopefully is going to see its way onto screen soon. So we can do a lot. So it's just about letting us do it. So Bedford Wise for us was great. It was time to finally play with a 48-minute format and be on location. And, you know, now it's on Amazon Prime. So it's just How like... How did that happen? <laughs> Um, it's it's not even that deep. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, I'm thinking, oh my goodness. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. When you tweeted it, I was like, I'm actually going to, like, you know, I'm going to go crazy. I put it on Prime. I was like, yo, what's going on here? It's yeah, amazing. it's crazy. It's also because of the style of the show. So it was mostly English. In yeah. South Africa, nowadays, the chances of having a 90% English show is very slim. Yeah which is great, it's a good thing. The story lended itself to being that because it was about a wife of a mobster in Bedford View. So a lot of the characters were white and, you know, so it was more 90% English. So yeah. it played in a space where international audiences can watch because the trend that we hear, and this also re relates to films, and that's where the whole debate on films comes mm -hmm. in South Africa, whether you're going to make your film all English or you're going to make your film vernacular, yeah. is that if you want your film to travel, Subtitles aren't really the thing, unless you're doing a foreign language indie yeah, film, yeah, yeah. then that's cool. But if you want to make a commercial piece of work, they always, they, I don't know, whoever they are, mm. will mm. tell you that, even in Africa, I'm not even talking about trying to sell to Americans or whatever, sure. they don't want to read subtitles. Um, they don't want to read okay. subtitles. So if, is, 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 this, is this a fact or is this something that you picked up? Or uh, is, is they They are saying that. So like people that sell to other markets besides okay. South Africa are saying that. So then there becomes the push and pull of like, you want to make something authentically South African. So 
you want to make your film in a local language. But yeah. then if you want to sell it to outside markets, it's a lot harder if people have to read subtitles the whole way. Sure. So Bedford Wives, even though it did have wall-to-wall -wall subtitles, which were subsequently removed for Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. just to further show that that's how you know the world yeah. is working, just got acquired. It's basically, it was just sold. It was a simple Amazing. deal, yeah. It who owns... Uh, oh, obviously, SABC. Okay. SABC owns Bedford Wives. Um, SABC does um, have clauses around royalties and you can claim and stuff like that even when things are sold. So have they're one of the... It? Yeah, they're one of the only broadcasters. If I, only, I mean, I stand corrected. They're the only currently. Yeah, if yeah. I, yeah, I stand unless, corrected. Un unless there's some sort of half license, half whatever. Yeah. Where you get to share and deal. Yes, and, and yes. So, I mean, that, that makes sense. But even if they fully commission the show, you, you, still, get you, you still get royalties in certain bits and parts of, of that. So that's great about Look, them. The, it's one thing sort of having that on the contract, but it's one thing getting your money. Yeah, uh, getting your money is... Uh, we have for previous things and whatever. It eventually comes. I'm not, you know, so I'm... I'm I'm going to tell you, it does come, you just have to chase up on it and, okay. and, and stuff. But the fact that that's even offered, obviously we'd want a bigger chunk and a bigger yeah. cut, but it's, it steps in the right direction. And I think right now they are more open to also licensing and pre-licensing, so yeah, that's I great. Yeah, I heard that so, they, they, there was some sort of, you know, restructuring around uh, their license deals and their commissions and all that stuff. But, I mean, these are interesting times, people. Yeah. I think, to... I think that's great because they're willing to have that conversation, yeah. which you want a broadcaster that can but, have but, those but, conversations. But the, the, the perception of the public broadcast is that the conversations, uh, you know, can last up to a year, two years, three years. No, no, no. I think, if tiresome. you, I think if you chase it up, I don't think that's always the case. I think that's just what people say. Yes, you do have to chase it up. Sure. Uh, there's a lot more red tape, it's, you know, but, I mean, chase it up. <laughs> Cool. Chase Thank it you. up, yeah. Talking about, because you just sparked something, and what I've always wondered about your business is that you don't retain a lot of staff. No. You, it's just the three <laughs> of you guys and maybe one more person. Yeah. Why? Because it's just going to be financially more viable that way for us. Okay. Yeah, so Which, it's just it's like... Business. It's a business. Yeah. I, I, it was a nice idea back in the day to be like, oh, my God, 100 people, but the climate in which... Yeah, South African television true. works. I don't know that it's the way to go anymore. So that's something we've had to we learn. in an industry because for me it's like, how is it that these companies are coming up and at the end of the day or at the end of the three month cycle or four month, however the production is, you however get longer, smaller. you get smaller or you keep, you keep a concise, because I, I've tried, and I've suffered from that. I, I keep a staff of 25 people. Yeah, I was like, oh, how's Legend? Uh, how's and it I'm, I'm sitting outside and I'm like, what is Legend? Yeah. Uh, but on. <laughs> but I'm, 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 this time around, I'm not even doing any productions. And this is not to sort of brag about this, but it's almost like I, I can't achieve the signature without these people who get to learn the environment, mm -hmm. who get to learn us and the way we work. How do you achieve that, the, the, the burnt onion-ness, if burnt onion is forever changing? Yes, yeah, so what we do is we bring in people when we need to. So when we pick you know, new shows, we bring in the people that will then show run the show. When it's this, so there's no need for me to have 10 people doing nothing, watching online shows. Gotcha. There's, I know that's what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah, so I could pay all of you to sit at, at the office, but I know 80% would just be watching shows online. Yeah. So as a need, when the company needs it, then we do it and we yeah. pay for it and then it works I out. I say, that is the smart way to do it. It's, it's, it definitely yeah. is the way to do it. But I, I have this fear of like, Losing my signature, losing losing the people that you've done. Yeah, like but that, you I know understand. that whole you know that whole thing that they say though. People need to grow. It doesn't Ooh. mean they're not going to come back. In fact, if you let them go, let them work on Survivor, yeah. let them work on the other shows. So when they come back, they're going to be like, "Yo, this is the way I you. know how, so much more from when I knew." Yeah. So yes, I also used to have that. Don't worry, I went through that. Oh yeah. no, but I'm losing. three years in. You're ten years. Uh, yeah, exactly. Be, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, why can't we keep her? But we literally can't afford to. It's not going to make financial sense to keep this person on our books. Let them go. In fact, we've worked with 
almost everyone that has left in the couple of years have has grown. I think there was a, a lady who was a production coordinator on the first season of My Perfect Family who then went on to be the PM later. And then, you know, you know, so we've watched people grow. So, and I can't offer you that growth in that time. Go grow somewhere else. And then later on, we'll bump into each but other. But is there a somewhere else? Because sometimes I, I think as well, like, sure, where I, I, I might lose this person from a company perspective. But do they have another thing? But do they have another thing? Is there something that you think about? It is something that I think about. I think mm. the people that I work with so far have been very fortunate in that they Don't get you? rolled over onto waves. I mean, so. once you have the burnt onion signature, <laughs> anyone's trying to take I you. I hope so, yeah. So they get rolled over. So I'm quite proud of that. Um, obviously, you do think it's quite sad, like, oh, we have to let, you know, yeah, the contract I... ends, the contract ends. But that's also their thing. They are a freelancer. Yeah. So they need to make those provisions and that is how the business works.